citizen. And with the same old story, doggone kids with their BB guns and 22s, scaring the living daylights out of folks, smashing property, don't seem to give a hoot. Well, this is it. It's one I'm going to take care of myself, and believe me, it'll be taken care of. Why don't kids obey the law like everybody else? They know there's no shooting allowed inside the city. Suppose they envy the farm lads who can shoot any time they want to, and have, ever since they've been knee-high to grasshoppers. Yes, there's a mighty big fascination about firing guns. No, there always has been for me. I even feel like a kid during target practice. Suppose they don't mean any harm, but doggone it, they've got to learn they can't go shooting off guns where folks are liable to get hurt. Lord knows they've been warned often enough, and from the complaints that have poured in, the court is about ready to throw the book at them. Too bad, too. But it's got to stop somehow. Now. Well, there's the irate citizen, madder than the wet hen. Can't say I blame him much for getting up in arms and demanding action, especially when the taxpayer's property gets smashed as regularly as those light bulbs. <laughs> and there's the evidence as plain as the nose in your face. No getting out of that. And he's going to make sure I do my part in giving those boys everything that's coming to them. Okay, Mr. Citizen, the law's on your side. Come along and see the grand finale. The culprits don't stand a chance. There they are just playing a nice, quiet game of catch. Innocent as the day they were born. If this weren't so serious, it'd be funny. But it's a police job now. Or is it? Of course, there's no gun around. No evidence, as usual. They're pretty smart kids. I wish I could make them understand, as man to man, what trouble it'd save us, and most important, them. They're not bad boys just boys. And no one knows better than I do that boys will be boys. What a picture of innocence. There isn't any use asking who did it. I've gone through that before. And I can't say I blame them for not sticking their necks out. Although the situation calls for some pretty drastic action, I figure I'll warn them once more and try to find a better solution than dragging them all to the station. Mr. Citizen doesn't seem to like my decision one bit. I wish that man would quit his yapping. It only makes me more determined to find some other way out of my problem.
That's where the rifle's hidden. This is Carl Krasner, clean-cut lad, but certainly headed in the wrong direction, unless something is done, and soon. Well, that was the start of my story, and it ended up with a report from the chief. Use of firearms by juveniles within city limits. Facts are facts, and there they were. And the chief wanted action, and he meant by me. Maybe if I had concentrated on one boy, Carl Krasner, I'd have got further. If I had wanted to, I could have made a charge against him stick. He and I both knew who was guilty. And friend taxpayer, how to find it. Perhaps if I forgot about the whole thing for a while. Forget about it. What a chance. I was actually worried about that kid and his pals. Maybe I'm too soft for this business. Maybe I should have run the kid in. Maybe that was the answer. But the others would keep on. Darn kids, they'll shoot anyhow. Don't I know it? Well, if they were going to shoot, why couldn't they be controlled? If shooting's so fascinating to Carl Krasner and his buddies, why can't they shoot under supervision? In a club, maybe, or... That's it, a club using the range right here. Maybe it'd work. Yes, sir, a long shot, but it might work. I'll see what the chief has to say. The chief heard me out. I'll say that for the chief. He'll listen to a fellow. And although he agreed that a rifle club might be the means of clearing up the situation, he brought up some points I hadn't taken time to consider in my enthusiasm for the idea. He wondered if we were the right people to do it. We'd have to learn how in the first place. We'd have to get the parents' approval, properly supervise the shooting, and we'd need a lot of equipment, targets, mats, rifles, and ammunition, none of which we had, not to mention the interest of the boys. But he did say we could use the police shooting range if I could get the thing organized. It was a mighty big hit. First off, I went to see the mayor, because the project was as much a civic venture as a police one. The mayor will go for anything that gives the younger generation a break, and he gave me his wholehearted support. Well, I had my hands full, and I had only myself to blame. But I'd started this thing, and by George, I'd finish it if it could be finished. I had to have some information on how to form a club. I'd call the local ammunition man about that. No, I'd better go and see him. Personal contact was the thing here. I'd met the ammunition man on many occasions in connection with shooting competitions around town, and he was enthusiastic about the club. He had most of the material I needed right on hand from Dominion Marksman, the National Organization of Rifle Clubs. This would give me targets, rule books, general plans, and many ideas. And he promised to add some suggestions of his own and send everything over to the station for me. Now I felt I was actually underway. Now for the equipment, the biggest item, rifles. I was a bit dubious about this. I took special pains to explain the idea behind the club to a hardware store proprietor, but I needn't have bothered. He was for the plan from the beginning. 
To my surprise, he offered to donate two rifles to the club. Rifles I'd make sure would never be used to shoot out electric light bulbs. I felt quite happy with the way things were going. Ammunition proved just as easy, and as soon as my needs became known, I had promises for all the ammunition the club could use for some time to come. Of course, I didn't get it all in one place, but it was an eye-opener to me how people fell in with the idea. I was lucky to run into the president of one of the fraternal organizations on the street, and after listening to my problem, he said he'd try to get some financial help from his membership. As things turned out, this proved even bigger than I'd hoped for, and I was able to add many articles to the equipment already promised for the club. When I approached the service clubs, they inquired into my project quite thoroughly because many of them were engaged in boys' work already. But when they decided to cooperate, they really did, and with purse strings pretty loose. I was beginning to see the proverbial silver lining on the clouds. So far, so good. It had taken some time to collect the equipment, but I had it, and I figured the club was as good as a going concern. Then the literature arrived, and there was plenty of it. I felt like a kid again getting my first Boy Scout medal. Competition rules, targets, instructions, handbooks, everything. That chap had done a mighty fine job for me. All this was going to make it a lot easier. I couldn't wait to start reading and plunged into the material with a lot of enthusiasm. It was all there, the plans, the operation, the details. But I was feeling so elated I had forgotten one thing, the thing. As yet, I had no idea whether the boys would go for it. That was my next step, and I approached it with considerable misgiving. I figured the best way of starting to gain the confidence of the boys was to get some publicity in the local paper. The paper agreed to cooperate a hundred percent, and their police reporter wrote a special story about the club. Even with the newspaper story out, I realized only too well that until I had spoken to the boys personally, I'd never know whether I had a club or not. So this was my next move. The organization meeting was all set for 8 o'clock Friday night. That was three days off. And here I was meeting my first boy. To tell the truth, I was worried that my whole project might fall through. I had to play it carefully, or they'd think I was pulling a fast one. I had to get over the point that the club was in their interest as well as those of the police, although I soft-pedaled the latter. But I was due for a slight shock at this stage. I couldn't glean a bit of satisfaction from one of the first group of boys I talked to. They sure would have gotten a kick out of it had they known how disappointed I was. You know, popularity is a funny thing, and I was just beginning to realize how much of it I lacked. But the more I thought about it, the more I made up my mind to put this thing across. If I could break down the barrier between the kids and the police, the whole idea was worthwhile. By luck, I came across a group of boys playing baseball. 
my spirits rose. Among this group, surely I thought I'd get some reaction for or against a rifle club. They were lads evidently keen on sports and competition. Maybe if I tried a new approach. And then it happened. A foul ball landed right in my hand. It seemed to break the ice. And when I called them over, they came willingly enough. Again, I outlined the plan and drove home the date and time of the meeting. They listened respectfully, and I knew they understood the whole idea. But when it came to a response, well, it was just the same as before. But I realized one thing, and this brought a ray of hope to my tired brain. I felt the boys at least had listened. That was something. I could only hope they were interested enough to attend the meeting. came a real test. If I could convince Carl Krasner the whole plan was good and in his interests, he'd turn the tide with the others, I was sure. Carl was a born leader if I ever saw one, and it would be a personal victory if I could win him over. Mrs. Krasner was worried when she saw who it was. I asked if Carl were in. I'm glad she didn't answer, though because the answer came from another source. Carl himself appeared, and with him, his rifle. He did his best to hide it, but he knew I'd seen it. Mrs. Krasner wondered what I was going to do. Suddenly, I had the answer. I motioned Carl over and tried to appear pleasant. Under the circumstances, he couldn't refuse to come. I asked him to show me his gun. He was reluctant to hand it over, but finally he did. I pointed out several safety features of the gun and told him it was a good rifle. He couldn't get over it. Then I told him about the meeting. Perhaps I had won the battle, perhaps I hadn't. Time alone would tell. Eight o'clock, Friday night, to be exact. Friday night rolled around only too fast. I had done everything I could. The equipment, guns, targets, booklets, all were there. But I still didn't know whether I had a club or not. Ten minutes to go. Someone should have been here by now. And someone was, only it wasn't a boy. It was a reporter. He'd become quite a supporter of my venture since the story broke and was eager to see it materialize. Five minutes to go. But boys are usually ahead of time. I can remember when I was a kid. Well, there were the men, right on time. They sure were behind this thing. I was a bit disappointed my boys hadn't been on hand for the men to see. But, well, you know boys. They'd probably pull in at the last minute just as a gag. But look at it any way you like. The boys were still the reason for the club. And without them, no club. It was just as simple as that. Oh, I was glad to see the men, but I sure wish they'd have been the kids. Funny that some of them weren't here. There are always a few curious ones who want to see what's going on. Maybe one or two had persuaded the whole bunch to stay away. Carl Krasner, for instance. He was an unpredictable kid. You never knew. But they all liked to shoot. That I knew only too well. Well, time's up. You don't keep businessmen waiting without some good reason. I guess I've had it. I should have known better than to start the thing in the first place. If you're a policeman, do what a policeman's supposed to do. I'll know better the next time. But why don't the kids come? Why? If those boys don't show up, I won't be responsible for what happens. Maybe I'll even like doing it. 
can't blame the men for being restless. I gave them such a build-up. But I'm going to stick it out as long as they do. Well, gents, it was nice knowing you. Sorry and all that sort of thing. Why not let's get out of here? And the sooner the better. so welcome. There they were, the whole kit and caboodle of them. Come on in, boys, the water's fine. Somehow I knew deep down that kid would come. Kids are funny. And this one is a leader or I miss my bet. Nordstrom, you old fool. What did you worry about? And so we got started. And it turned out just like I'd hoped for, only much, much better. The night of that meeting, we laid plans for what turned out to be one of the finest teenage rifle clubs in the country. My biggest thrill came when Carl Krasner was elected president and the boys began running the meetings themselves. And they operated just like old hands at the game. My original four boys were on the executive, and that's the way I wanted it. came the shooting. It didn't take long for the boys to become good shots either, and I soon came to the conclusion that I wouldn't have given a plugged nickel for any street lamp in the city if my boys had been turned loose on them. We held regular classes of instruction in proper care and handling of firearms, and safety was continually drilled into every member. Constable Kinzel spent a lot of time with the boys, as did other officers on the staff, and most of it was on their own time, too. It wasn't long before almost every boy in town heard about the club, and we had far more trying to get in than we could handle. Then came the long-awaited event for the boys. They received their medals for the work they had done and the interest they had shown. Wouldn't be surprised if some of them competed in big time shooting someday. But these lads had learned more than just how to shoot. They'd become sportsmen and above all, were learning good citizenship. I was mighty proud of those boys. Then one day I got a jolt. Someone phoned in who wouldn't give his name and said some boys were shooting on 16th Street. This I had to see. So 
once again, Constable Kinzel and I took personal charge. When we arrived on the spot, who should we find but Carl Krasner and Bob Wilson and other club members with a couple of boys I had never seen before. This was a new one on me. I asked for details. It appeared the club boys had caught the others red-handed, rifle and all, in their own district. I asked what Carl and his chums recommended. Carl had it all figured out. The new fellows would have to join the club or else take what was coming. I asked the new boys what they wanted to do. They discussed the matter and evidently felt that discretion was the better part of valor. Sure, they'd join the club. That fixed that. I found out later, much later, that the new fellows had been trying to get in the club for weeks, but couldn't because our membership was filled right up tight. And so things turned out all right. It was something to watch the good in those boys come out and go to work. It happened here, and boys being boys, it can happen anywhere. Kids are funny. Believe me, I know.